Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. <laughs> oh, hello out there, gang. Happy Wednesday, folks. Yep. The designers are so hip. I know. We are. Um, that is a groove for a Wednesday. I love that. Yep. Not going to lie. It's as good as it gets, though. <laughs> <laughs> I can't dance on Thursdays. In, in, in a, in Except for the fact that you're here, Bob. It's all downhill. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, that's a bar I can try to uh, stay up with. Very cool. And we love our chat room. Look at this; everybody's coming in from yeah, all they're over the west out there. It's wonderful. Yeah, all over the all over the world. Yeah, we are we are that's blessed with the, the quantity of folks and the quality of folks that join us from yeah. from points all around the globe for sure. Yeah. Hey, that gang. Wonderful. Guess what? Um, for the first what? time here on Instructional Designers in Offices, Drinking Coffee, hashtag idiotic, um, we have Bob Mosher with us. Bob, since it's your first time, introduce yourself uh, to the folks that are that are here with us today. Oh my gosh, uh, I am ecstatic to be here, friends. Uh, Bob Mosher, I am the, how's this, Chief Money Evangelist for um, a company called Apply Synergies. There you go. Uh, uh, September 6th of last year, friends, I celebrated my 40th year in instruction. Uh, believe it or not, I was 12 when I started. This, <laughs> say, but that's not the case. Uh, but I did start out teaching eight-year-olds. I had these aspirations of being what we call an elementary school teacher for uh, most of my life. Then found out, unfortunately, I couldn't feed my family on it, um, but did get my master's in what we call the uh, adult education slash computer science training uh, in 1987. Some of you may not have been born then. And then uh, uh, went in kicking and screaming to the IT training space, adult world and learning uh, world. And man, it's been a, it has been a ride since. Um, uh, and so, uh, but here I sit uh, mm -hmm. 30 some odd years later. I'm very excited about the topic of the day uh, and anxious to, to get into the dialogue yeah. and appreciate the invite. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, um, the, the, the more I, you know, think about it, I'm pretty sure that in the '80s, the child labor laws were were a lot less, uh, you know, strong. So, so, so many of us had to start out working young, way yes. younger than than many folks today. You know? <laughs> at least, at least emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hands up if you're still 12 at times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love that. Oh, that's the joy of things. Yeah, for sure, gang. Um, so one of the things that you've you've long uh, been known for is the the five moments of need, and we mm. were talking a little bit in in the green room ahead. It's something that um, that I've long valued uh, to be able to explain to people how we can do better at the job that we would normally consider the training you know department mm. should be doing, working to help make sure that people are um, that we're helping our organization you know improve performance. Um, making actual differences in, in the metrics that matter for our organizations, not just yeah, counting the bums in seats and the mm -hmm. test scores, et cetera, that, uh, that we often get focused on uh, as metrics. Um, I'd love to hear, I guess, about the, the, the place where that sort of first started coming together for you, you know, how, how you guys, how you and Conrad Gottfriedson kind of got to that, because um, it's, it's, it's a, a really different approach compared to what we normally consider instructional design. Yeah. And, and Chris, you know, I, I can't, I, like in many folks, I came in kicking and screaming. It was 20 years ago. I was a senior director of learning and strategy evangelism. That was my actual title at Microsoft, um, in the, in the learning group. I was responsible for supporting our, at the time, 1700 training partners worldwide in our certification programs. And I've been brought in um, in my in my tenure there as to to introduce a blended learning program, uh, as we were calling it back then. And I come from a very large um, uh, e-learning provider at the time, so I had a great background in that. Um, and they did not have a lot of e-learning at the time, so it kind of dates me when all this whole thing happened. And then um, off we went, and we and that was like my first major program. Didn't go well. Uh, just to say the least, <laughs> I won't give you the numbers, but it was not impressive. 
Um, and so I knew this gentleman, Dr. Con Gopperson. I was doing a workshop around train the trainer at the time, stand up ILT, and um, always admire Con's work. And I said, look, dude, you got to take a look at what's going on because, guys, I had the best. I, I, I had a team of five among the 300 I was a part of in the group. And, and three of my five were PhDs in instructional something, you know, so I, so I had the, 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 the brand of Microsoft. I had the, the money, frankly, of Microsoft and the reach of Microsoft and the technology of Microsoft. I mean, so as an L&D professional, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. And yet he, here we sat with this thing that just did not get the lift that it should have with all that power behind it. And it brought Khan in uh, as a consultant. I said, dude, you know, what's, what, where did we miss? And he said, here's the thing, you, you, you have a remarkable program, a, 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 a beautifully designed thing that uh, has no consumers who want to use it. And I was like, how can that be possible? <laughs> and he said, because, you, 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 because, because it was a content pivot, not a context one. And I was like, what, what? I was like, get, you know, obviously give me more. And he said, you know, the reality is learners come to come to instruction because they have a need for it, right? There's the word, right? A need for it. Um, and hopefully that need aligns to performance. It should, a performance need, right? And so we are all about people using our software. Uh, and get, by the way, this is no knock to Microsoft. I think this is a this is an instructional pivot people do all the time. The people, you know, someone comes, comes up to us and says, we're launching a new CRM, help us do that. You know, that, that, that that's a content pivot, not a context one, right? And so, so he looked at our program and said, well, you know, there's these two needs called new and more. When people have no clue about technology or anything, or they do, but they want to know more about it. And uh, that's what your blended learning thing does. But here's the problem. 90% of your techs are, have been techs for 10 years, 20 years. They've got certificates to cover a wall. And they are trying to, here it comes, apply, solve, or change. Uh, keep up with your technology that you're throwing at them and changing weekly. And the, the blended learning program you've designed, and I love this concept, is really, frankly, a blended training program. And I was like, what do you mean by that? He goes, it's, it's, you took training assets and mixed them up. You know, your courses used to be six days long, five days long. Now they're two. You surround them with e-learning, you know, and now you've got blended training, not blended learning. And that was, Chris, when I was thrown into this remarkable world of, holy crap, I'm, I'm, I'm missing 80% of the needs of the population we supported because it was all about, uh, my, my stuff was a training pivot. It was new and more stuff. Um, we, we hoped apply change and solve happened, but, but we were like, that's you know, not our domain or, or problem. And so that launched me 20 years ago into this because, yeah, friends, once I saw five moments, I was like, as an instructional designer, how do I turn away from that? You know, I mean, I mean, how do I how do I go back mm -hmm. <laughs> to only meeting two of the five needs of my learners? And by the way, the two I'm meeting are, are, are a fraction of their needs during a given day. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning, guys, of my journey into this 20 years ago. And it's been um, crazy ever since. Mm -hmm. It's been funny yeah. how long it has taken us as an industry as a whole to to kind of move that needle, right? Like there's, if you look around, there's still so oh my many gosh. organizations. Right. Yeah. That, that well, but here's the thing. I figured it out yet. Well, well, that's what I love about our dialogue today, right? Is that I've been at this for 20 years, banging my head against a wall, by the way, for 20 years. And half of that banging has been with L&D. <laughs> to be completely transparent. You know, I'm old. I'm, I'm the 62-year-old guy, so my filters are down. So, so those listening, be prepared. Um, you know, and, and, and so the, the, the thing is, you guys, um, what I learned in my journey is that when I first came out with this 20 years ago from Khan, not, and I was like, my gosh, this is going to this is going to take the world by storm. How can this not be obvious? Well, what I ran into was L&D. <laughs> and, and, and if I may, what I mean by that is a steeped conservative well-educated, who know what, 200-year-old, I don't know what the years are, right, industry that was fairly married to it's the way we do things, right? Mm -hmm. and, and at the same time, what I also like to go, friend, is that, is that we also taught our learners what we did. I, I don't know if this sounds familiar to anyone listening, but if you ever heard these words, I would like five days of training on leadership. I would like 16 learnings on sales, right? Right. They, 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 we're one of the few professions that people come, it, come into our office pre-prescribing 
<laughs> the the salute. I don't go to my doctor and say, "Well, I want nine Advil because my arm hurts." I mean, you know, I, I you know, I, I go to my doctor because yeah. my arm hurts, and then I kind of sit there, <laughs> right? But, yeah. but so 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 there's two sides of this, my friend. There's 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 the the fact that learning cultures, if you want to call them that, or ecosystems, are steeped in a training first approach for yeah. generations, if I dare. We as an industry have pedigree that goes back. I have a master's degree in education in the states, and it was all about Addy and yeah. training. I mean, I, I, I did not, in my, in my six years of higher and, and, a, and a higher, higher ed, I didn't have a PowerPoint on workflow learning, formal learning, performance support. Not a one, I mean, not a one. So yeah. you got to get there. Mm -hmm. What's, uh, tell us, do you have a uh, good case? I don't know, Chris, if you, uh, you kind of wanted to go this direction, but we've got the five moments of need. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I think it's fairly obvious folks, what the five moments of needs are. Bob touched on them briefly. You can Google them fairly. They're all over the place. Uh, you, they're easy to find. So I don't think we have to spend too much time doing that. Uh, but what I, I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit about is some of the, the transitions, right? Because obviously I, I, the reason, there was a reason why I asked that first question, right? L and D is having a hard time changing. Okay. So there's a lot of people that are still trying to, and there's a lot of different reasons why you can, mm -hmm. or you can't, you know, make this switch or at least start moving in that direction. Do you have any, um, you know, any good stories that can like really help our listeners like start to feel confident? Cause my guess is we've got a lot of folks in the chat that are, all in on it. They, they know you, I can tell they're all saying hi, you know, and, and, uh, you know, but what people really want to try to figure out is how in the sure. heck do we, do we make this happen? And what does that look like? Like what, what are some of this, what are your favorite successes that you like to share? Yeah. 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 It's a great. And, and, and I, I love Adam's comment over here in the comment. The only way your boss will let you stop working to learn is if there's a problem that needs to get solved. You know, and, 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 the, and the reality is, you guys, is that part of the journey is having a different conversation, yeah. is hosting a different dialogue, right? And, and, and again, back to the, back to the, the idea of, of, of the beast we've created here is that, um, you know, any organization I've known that's, that's been successful at this, McKinsey, Department of Defense, Disney, I mean, the, 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 Amer the, the list goes on and on that, that, are, that are actually well on the on the, on the journey of doing this will tell you, you know, it, it started, you know, you, you boil the ocean one cup at a time, right? And so, so you, it really helps to have um, a, a business problem to solve, not a, not content to be taught, right? And, and so, so it, it's, when we, when we, when we bring organizations up on this methodology, one of the first things we talk about is before you can get to design and, and any deliverable, you've got to start, you've got to host a different conversation in your organization to let you do this, right? So, so we have to ask very different questions than we may maybe historically have, which is opposed to when they walk in for five days of training, it's like, well, how big's your budget? When do you want it? And can, and are your SMEs available? You know, that's, those are different, those are different questions then. What, wait, wait, leadership training, five days, five days? <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna pull people, out. wait, we're, wait, wait, wait. We're gonna pull our leaders. Let me just understand this for a moment. We're gonna pull our leaders out of work for five days to have them be, become what? And, and, and why is, and, and, and let's just do the math. That's a, let alone what you're gonna pay me to do it, to build it. That, that's a right. remarkable investment on, our, on the part of our organization. So help me understand why you're even in here. I mean, what, what itch to scratch did you, did you, well, you know, like they can't do performance reviews. They're, they're lousy at performance reviews. You know, or they, they can't manage people virtually. This whole COVID thing's been a mess. And so all of our managers that were high touch and terrific, they're lousy when people are in there. Well, see, we're having a different conversation now, right? This is, this is about performance outcomes and, and everything is a, is a performance pivot. Everything is a performance pivot, right? And so, so where I'm going with this, my friend, is then let's build something about doing PAs better. Let's start there. Let's not build a new leadership course or let's not you know, do competency modeling or whatever the other things we've kind of thrown at this in the past, you know, let's, yeah. let's, let's build, let's build a thing that helps people do PAs better or, you know, or, or manage virtually better. But now before we do that though, 
we got to understand what we think that means. And here we go, right? What is the workflow? You're going to hear me say this word a ton of times in the time we're together here that these people live in right now that we want them to perform in. And you guys, that's the beginning of a completely different direction for your design and what you'll build. Um, and notice, no arena, if I said, is going to be a course and e-learning and anything, right? That's going to come downstream when, once I understand, you know, what I'm trying to do. And you guys, here's the, here's the thing. And, and I'm going to try to give you some, some broader principles to walk away with, especially some new folks on this call is build for performance first, training second. This is a, a huge difference in our thinking, right? In my old days, the first 20 years, everything was going to be a course first. And if I had time, I'd make job aids. That's a different thing than saying, I'm going to build a digital coach, an embedded work, workflow environment, you know, and, and then I'll decide if I do any training at all in, in support of that. You know, that, that, that's a very different um, design pivot yeah. than, than we've done in the past. So, so success stories, my favorite, you guys, is in this, and this is, um, they, they, they won a Brandon Hall Gold Award for this, which it, there is a performance support um, uh, workflow learning category there now, is McKinsey um, had a, um, a, an 18-month onboarding program. Think about that, you guys. And by the way, we, we do a lot of work in onboarding because it's, it's lousy in most <laughs> many companies. I once had a, once had a large airline um, SVP tell me, we don't have onboarding here, we have offboarding. Um, but, you know, but so it's 18 month onboarding program before people were trusted to work, that, which is really what it was, right? They, 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 they coached them and held their hand in this highly critical role until they let them do it on their own. But 18 months, and by the way, most quit at about 60 because they're like, I, I, I clearly aren't, and not valued here because I can't do my, I mean, it's 18 months and I have, I'm not allowed to do my job by myself. But so they, they had this. And so, so a lot of problems, right? Too long, too much handholding, high cost. And so they said, look, let's, as opposed to everything being a content, you know, when are they ready pivot and we won't let them go until they are. Um, what if we looked at the role and the workflow of when people come on to this job, we'll see, um, tasks that are not critical. We'll talk, we can talk about that more in a minute. In other words, it doesn't kill anybody or we don't lose a client or that they can start doing right away. Um, and, and, and get them into the workflow doing those things. We'll, we'll talk about benefits and where they can park. We'll, you know, we'll do that part too, but, but, but then we'll, and then, but then we're, but we're going to fundamentally build a digital coach, a, a digital environment dashboard that they're given on day one that sits by their side as they are onboarded this, to this role. Well, they went from 18 months to uh, nine, their first year, they went down to uh, six, their second, and they're trying to get it down to three now. You know, so, so these are examples of, you know, when we look at the, the world of performance first, um, it, it chunks the content differently and, it, and, it, and it, it will help you build a different deliverable to meet that need than we historically have. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We got a, a question in the chat that, that might uh, dovetail along with this, but uh, Adam's asking, when I bring this up in the field, people are wondering hmm. how can we bring learning into the flow if we don't understand the flow to start with? How do we get over that hill? Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. There's a lot of we in that point in that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Anna, I love you. I, I, I appreciate you asking that because we don't understand it. The people in the flow do. And by the way, let me throw another one out that don't understand it well. S SMEs don't either, by the way. I get a lot of uh, hate mail for this, but we've relied on SMEs for too long for our design. And what I mean by this is, I don't know if you guys have ever re read the research, but what's interesting is that up to half of what SMEs do innately, um, they can't remember to tell somebody who's not one how to do. Yet we put them in a room to build the course for those that are not there yet. It's kind of broken, to be honest, in a lot of ways, right? Because they pivot on words like important and what, what was best for me and all these other kind of things, right? So, so back to Adam's question is what, what you, you get, you, you get um, those that do the work in a room and you basically ask them, what do you do? I mean, the, 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 the pivot is a, is a task. And Khan, Khan, when he teaches this, is very clear. The smallest piece of content structure in performance-based design is something called a task. 
it, it is it is something that you can start and finish and when you're done you've done something right a step is different processes but processes a bunch of tasks I mean, i'm getting a little, little myopic here but all right and so you sit down adam to his question you say look you guys tell me i'm gonna fill a whiteboard with tell me the tasks you do when you do your job when you lead when you sell when you do customer service when you crawl under airplanes and fix them i mean all that stuff and then from that the workflow materializes the the because tasks become processes process become flows right it's, it's that building block approach to every company we go into we don't know anything about them we do not know their workflows um that that you you get you get from the people that do the work every day chris your mind must be spinning yeah so many things i mean we we've, we've, we've touched on it uh, you know a couple of times both in the chat and and, and bob as well but we, we're, we're just that we're that curious profession where other people know what we do and therefore they tell us what they what they want us you know to deliver um and so much uh of what i've always valued about the, the five moments of need is it gives us at least a framework to start having a different conversation i love that people Chris. into into to something else beyond just saying like you've said we need five yep. days of leadership training or etc um and and it's been something that um i mean self-promotion i guess whatever but we've really tried to think about that you know in, in the stuff that we've set up um you know for, for helping people learning domino one for instance it's not about the the training it's about the things that you need to do and the training program comes out of that uh, etc yeah. so I've, I've been fortunate to be in a position of been able to you know to start applying some of that stuff to even what we do you know here uh, you know, for our own, you know, customer based training, et cetera, too. Um, the, the, the time that I guess, you know, the first point at somewhere along the way, when I first bumped into it, though, it was, it was for me, a, a light bulb moment. I went, well, duh, you know, cause duh and light bulbs go together sometimes, <laughs> but that, that, that's sort of like, well, yeah, obviously, uh, why didn't we, but so many of us have come into this space though. Um, you know, we have this apprenticeship model in our space too, right? Somebody was good at something. Sure. So they get asked sure. to join this, the training team and then they they learn by osmosis from the people in the cubicles around them what we do in in the in the in the training uh world which is part of the reason as you say we're we're 200 years into a tradition but it's because we keep handing that tradition on from from uh craftsmen to apprentice uh, over generation right. um as opposed to something maybe where so many folks uh Many of us come into this space and then end up going and finding, you know, some formal training. Uh, you go find a, a, you know, a master's program or something after you realize that you really like this space, etc. Um, so there's so many inertias in in our space, as, as you've mentioned, the, the outside perception of, oh, it's the training department. They're going to deliver us training. Um, but a conversation we always end up almost every episode having is, is you know, being a business partner with the organization, mm. getting to getting beyond that, to being able to talk to and and uh you know be seen as something more than just a service uh department so that you can make um an actual difference in things and we're seeing that reflected in the chat too a lot well you know it, 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 it this is what's exciting for me chris is that i couldn't i, I again I, I always caution when i do these things that this is i always share my journey right I, and i and i and i do my very best not to cast that on anyone because we all have our own right but in mine i couldn't prove roi for 20 years couldn't do it and I had psychometricians at Microsoft that had PhDs in this stuff. I'm sorry, a psycho what? Uh, <laughs> people that write, people that do data analysis and write tests and, you know, worry about metrics, right? Data analysts. We had that before they called it that, right? Yeah. At Microsoft. I threw them all at this, you guys. I threw them all at this and they all came back going, well, it's, it, it kind of influences. And I'm like, no, no, that's not. <laughs> Meaning when, he, when they looked at my training only programs, friends, and I, again, I get hate mail about this. It's super hard to draw an ROI from a training program alone. It just is because it's distanced from the performance. It just yeah. is. Now I get awful careful here because you guys, there are five moments, new and more, two of them. We're not walking away from it. If you don't train, people suffer. I get all that. So, so please hear all of that. But my point is we have been a one hit wonder for too long. Yeah. Right. We've pivoted on this thing, go, well, you know, why, do, why are we always on the wrong side of the ledger paper? Why, when, when, when times get tough, as many, they are for many now, why does training get cut? Well, because we haven't proven ROI. They don't cut the sales team because sales has to sell, but they take training because we're this nice to have. 
You know, so so what I love about the world I've gotten into with this, and again, this is only my journey alone, is until I got into apply, solve, and change, ROI is hard. Because ROI lives in applying the knowledge, keeping up, and solving business problems. Apply, change, and solve. And I'll be honest, you guys, until I stumbled on this methodology and started building for apply first, I didn't have anything in that space. I just didn't. I had a good book, if you remember what books are. But I had a really good book, or I had a good e-learning, or an LMS, or an LXP, or whatever you want to call these acronyms nowadays. I mean, and, and again, I, I want to be careful. I, I'm not, I, I still have all of those. But my problem was that was all I had. And so the business didn't see me as a partner because, if I may, they didn't see me in the business, in the running of, performance of the business. Now, I absolutely supported that. They got it because they came in my office and asked for five days of blah, blah, blah. They got all that, you guys. So, so, so again, they saw causation. But when it came to the rubber meat in the road, and I don't know how you guys have, have experienced this, but I hear this from L&D people all the time. Well, they come in my office too late. Right. Why, why, why aren't I earlier in the conversation? Well, you guys, let's, again, let's get really real about this. They'd be in your office earlier if they thought they should be there earlier. They would. Right. But they see us downstream. We're this checkbox. Once all the business decisions have been made, let's add training. We have to have training. And that is so unfair to us because it puts us in a box that that limits ROI, limits our impact, limits our deliverables. And in the end, oh my gosh, it, there's, I've seen some hurtful, painful things happen. So if you if you get involved in workflow analysis, workflow instruction, this kind of stuff, um, you know what what why are you in my office? What business problem are we solving here? What are your goals of the year? Do these align to the company's goals for twenty three? You know these kinds of questions I never asked for twenty years, right? But if if we get involved in this stuff, the business starts seeing us, Chris, in a very different way. I, I have more L&D folks and, and L&D leaders, CLO level, right? Chief learning officer that say, look, I'm a, I, I, here we go. I really finally have a seat at the table. <laughs> not, as one of my friends said, not in the room in the corner where I used to sit, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I was yeah. in the room, but I was in the corner, right? I am now at the table because I'm seen as impacting the business, standing shoulder to shoulder with them, wanting to understand KPIs and all these things that they speak every day. Yeah. And I'm going to, and I'm going to create things that support that directly of which training is part. You, you see this, 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 this different thing. And, and so it, yeah. it's, it, but it's, it's, it's an interesting journey that we have to realign ourselves to. And it's, at, I think the, the part that I think is frustrating for folks, and I don't, I don't mean this in a negative way, but it's really, really hard work to change to oh, influence, super. to to move an organization to do things differently. And I, I think we can all sit around, which we all have done for the last 20, 30 years and, and you know, complain that we don't have a seat at the table. But I think to flip it in a more positive light and give us more control over it is that we need to earn that seat at the table. Well, and, and, it, it, and, it, and if I may, um, there's, a, there's a comment just made. L&D is often misunderstood at the business level, especially higher up. Shame on us. Yeah. Sorry. You know, I, I don't it's know not their fault. I, I, don't, I don't know many salespeople that are misunderstood. I don't know many <laughs> marketing departments that are misunderstood because they come into those discussions with a very different dialogue. And we have kind of sat back waiting to be cared for <laughs> or appreciated. And again, again, I want to be awful careful here. I, 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 I'm on our team. <laughs> I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, in, I'm into this. But, but at the same time, I, I, just, I, I got a significant slap in the face at Microsoft when when the business people walked in my offices and said, look, I don't want the jargon. I don't want the L&D stuff. I don't want to know how many ATD awards you've won. I don't want to know all that kind of stuff. I, I, I walked by all that in the office when I came through the lobby. My point is I support this line of business. And what are you doing for me? I got to sell X software by this. My deployments aren't going well. People aren't implementing the software right. All these kinds of things. And But by the way, they've all got your, they've, 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 they've got all your training. So something's not aligning here, you know, and, 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 and that was a real slap in the face for me because I'm like, well, you know, you know what I mean? It, it, it caused me yeah. to pivot in, in, in a very different way. And so, and it, we, we've got to have, you know, and another thing I wanted to, to talk about and see if this helps friends with, 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 with framing is that part of the conversation I'm watching the, 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 the sidebar over here is, is, is change is getting, getting seen differently and getting the conversation differently and, and getting them out of these pre-prescribed deliverables and so on is another framework. If this helps, along with the five moments that I've often used. And Chris, I use that all the time. 
I'm like, look, you're talking about a new and more deliverable, but you know, what about apply change and solve? Another one I've used is the journey of the journey to performance, which, which I, I learned from a colleague once called train transfer sustain. And what it really means is that learners go through, learners have to participate in three things to, to perform not just well, but continually. They have to be trained to get it. They have to transfer that knowledge within the workflow, not to it, within it. And they have to keep up and sustain that, that, that understanding and more important application, right? The thing I like about that, that, that framework is that when people walk in for five days or something, I, I, I candidly say, well, you guys, that's going to help with the train part. That's going to do all, that's going to do all the lifting in the train part. But what you're ignoring and you're not asking me to help you with is the transfer of sustain. And I got to believe you're in my office because that's really what you care about. You really don't care that they leave knowing stuff or that they demonstrated that or that they passed a test. You, as a business person, you really probably don't care about that. What you care about is three months later, not only can they do it, but they can, they caught up with it. There's, they, they don't come back to me again for the refresher course, you know, this kind of stuff. And so I often use that to say, look, I want it. I, I, I want to, and can be in those other areas of that journey. If you let me, right. So let's talk about yeah. that. Let right. And, and so that, again, it's, it's, it's all this realigning the conversation and the mindset to let us offer a broader deliverable. Yeah. Consultants that I know, uh, used to go into businesses um, and to do to develop onboarding and training stuff and and, and whatnot or to, or to fix things. And she would always tell me that they would always she would always get mad because they would always try to put her in an office up by the executives and whatnot. And she would always have to fight to say, put me down on the floor with the people. Give me a desk. Give me a give me a, a, a cubicle, sure. whatever down with the people that you want me to onboard or train or whatever. I need to be understanding their processes, their life, what it's like to be the people that I need to train. Cause you guys can all sit up here on the third floor and tell me everything that you think they need to be doing and they <laughs> should be doing and everything that they're doing wrong. But until I am living and breathing what they're doing, we're not going to be able well, to make any change from up here. That's workflow analysis, what you just described. I can't analyze the workflow till I'm in it, till I'm allowed to talk to those who do it. You know, and, and, and to my ideas on the call here is, what I also want to be sure I leave, and I'll, I'll post in the chat again some links that I posted earlier, is that I am an ID. That is my background, and I knew Addy intimately, right? I didn't know anything else, candidly, but I knew Addy, and what I liked about it were a couple of things. Number one, I, I could do it over and over again, right? I, I, I could count on the deliverables being, Deliverables being consistent. The methodology had been vetted and proven. These are responsibilities we have as designers. I didn't have a workflow learning design. I did not. I, did, I didn't know how to do it. Right. And then I met God, Dr. Khan Godfordson and he introduced me to what he calls enable. E N A B L E, like A D D I E. Right. Enable is, you know, is, is his vetted 50 year methodology for designing for the workflow. And, and, and you can read more about that. I'll give you a link. But my point is, I, as a designer, I needed that like I needed Addy, right? Yeah. And so what, where you're going, Brent, about this is the first part of that enable methodology is that you go into the workflow and you do what he calls rapid workflow analysis, which is understanding the stuff happening on the floor and, 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 and the flow of all that kind of stuff, because that is ultimately in workflow design in five moments in apply, change, and solve that I have to understand to then design for. And you're right. We bring SMEs in a room on the third floor or some other building or on Zoom, and they're more than happy to give us a thousand things that are important or that, <laughs> that people should know. To I, I, was, I was working with an organization once. They said, look, we have these. Listen to you guys. That's, you know, this is how broken this was. We have three-day knowledge courses before people are allowed to touch anything. I was like, excuse me? They go, yeah, yeah. We call them knowledge courses. Three days. Three days knowledge courses because here here comes there's so much they have to know before they dare do anything. Oh my gosh! I mean, yeah. oh my gosh! Right? I mean, talk about death by PowerPoint. But <laughs> but but this you know but but this is the this is the misunderstanding of of the of the journey, right? Yeah. I get people have to know stuff to do. I get it. But if you don't associate knowing with doing, it's vapor, lost in seconds, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The Eppinghaus curve, all that kind of stuff. 
right? Yeah. And so that's where the neuroscience comes in, right? That's like you, you. <laughs> what a surprise! Right? Yeah, well, I, know, I know. Yeah, I know. Funny how it's 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 it supports all of that as you go through it. And just as a um as a quick additional note for those folks who may be kind of tilting your head wondering what enable was, we did have Khan on the show. Mm -hmm. I think last year, and I think he was talking about Enable. That was the the focus yeah. of that conversation. So there's a there's an archived recording out there, folks. If you want to go listen to Khan actually talk about all of this uh, all the stuff about Enable. So because I'm sure a lot of you are, um, you know, your next questions are and your thinkings are probably, you know, how do I implement this? How do I do that? Well, like Bob said, that's it. And we could get into it a little bit more today, but we don't need to. We've got Khan actually talking about it, and it's his thing. So go check it out. Yeah, and you got two quick stories, right? One, one I was doing a leadership training for a large military organization in our country. We got all these people with bars on their shoulders in a room and a couple people that were going to be leaders. About halfway through the first day of a lot of whiteboards, someone raised their hand and go, you know, permission to speak, which is what you do in that world. And one of the people with bars on their shoulders said, sure, you may. And the guy goes, here's the thing. This is remarkable. I mean, this is remarkable. I've been sitting here listening. And I hope someday I am like you. I mean, I'm looking at these whiteboards and this is really remarkable. But here's my concern. And this way he said, I don't want to be shot in the first 30 days of this job, which can happen in that world. He goes, because and I don't see anything. I don't, I don't see this up there. I, 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 you know, you guys are these 20 year two star, whatever things you've got that have, you know, leaders that I admire and we've written books about, but I am going to lead in a week. You know, and I and, and I got to survive th the first 30 days of it. And you got what was exciting. What was interesting is the collective air went out of that room. Because all these SME leaders looked up there and went, holy cow. This isn't about a leader intro to leadership course, you know, or, 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 or onboarding a new leader here, right? We got ca caught up in all of this knowing stuff and all of this someday you should and all these other kinds of things. And so you know, it, it's really important that we ask different questions, involve different folks in the, in the conversation and, and, and pivot on the workflow and, 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 and those initial steps or tasks into performing First, and we can get to the other stuff later. We're so tuned to writing a course, A to Z, on anything, right? And 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 the world of entering any role is A to E <laughs> at best, right? And so what I love about this, this discipline is I can write for E. I can write for B, just for B. And I'll get to the other letters later because the pivots on performance, not passing, accomplishing, completing, anything. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is, uh, this is why we have folks like you on the show, Bob, we hope to open people's minds and get everybody down, uh, running down this rabbit hole. If for, if for nothing else, maybe this is the first time somebody in the chat has actually heard about the five moments. Of the, I can't imagine that's the case, but, mm -hmm. um, it, it, well, let me just ask, is anybody, is this new for anybody? Did anybody see, a link somewhere and said, Oh, this thing with Bob sounds really cool. I've never heard of this before. <laughs> I'm just, just out of curiosity. I'll, you know, mm. let people answer. I'll, but. I'll draw attention as well. Were we waiting for reaction to that? Adam has a great comment in the chat, just two words, but it sums up so much of what we end up doing, especially working with, with SMEs, <laughs> but fetishing facts. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting when, 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 when I watched my first RWA from the back of the room, my first rapid workflow analysis from the back of the room, uh, my jaw was on the floor because I was like, I've never hosted these conversations before. I got SMEs in the room and said, so what do you think I should teach? And they flooded me with all the important stuff. And I remember being at Microsoft fighting over putting gutter margins in a day one word course with a guy that owned the product line. And I don't even going to tell you what those are. You have, probably have no idea. But, my, but the point is I lost the argument because the SME talked louder than me. But those did not belong in a day one course, just to put it. I don't even going to tell you what it is, right? But, but when, when, when you pivot on importance or an SME or, or rank and file, that's what ends up winning. When you pivot on performance and the workflow, what wins is, 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 is the job that gets done. And, 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 and it's not about importance, it's about criticality. Right. It's another thing we haven't talked a lot about, but 
you know, what, when, when you get more downstream in this design, you guys, what gets exciting is stuff still gets trained on, but on average, half or less than does now. Because what you realize is when you build a, a digital culture for the workflow first, and, and you're going to let learning happen there through the design that you build, you only have to teach stuff that doesn't kill people, right? I mean, because, because yeah. the classroom, which is stunning, should be used for the, the things that are most important. Now we use them for everything, literally everything, right? And this is such a freeing approach because it lets the classroom do what it does best and lets the learner learn where they learn best, which is the workflow. It's a really, it's a wonderful uh, marriage between the two. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, James throws in, uh, Bob's are dismissed at our company as learning talkers, sadly. And I was, I was curious by that. And, and I get that in general, um, there are a lot of learning leaders, uh, I guess, or for in our industry. And that's all you do is hear them talk. But, you know, James, I'll point out, and one of the reasons why I wanted to have Bob on here, and one of the reasons why I hit him up right away with the first question of, I know Bob's out there doing this. And I know Bob and Khan, this is legit, real, and they are out doing it. If there, if there are two doers that also talk about what they do, it's Bob and Khan. They're not just writing books, just on the speaking circuit, you know, just consulting, being a talking head or whatever. They do this stuff on a regular basis for companies all over the world. So, well, and, I, I and, mean, and, I don't know and, who and, needs to hear that, but. Well, but, Brent, but, but, I, but I think it's a fair comment because I think too often it is how we, I'll use the global we here, right? Had positioned ourselves. We, yeah. we, 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 we stay within the world we know and the jargon we've been taught um, and business acumen. I can't tell you how many times I got whacked by that because I was a learning guy and, and, did, and used learning speak to defend myself and why I should, you know, why I was worth getting paid. And, and yeah. where you're going with that is, the, the, again, 20 years ago, the pivot for me became about the business and its performance, not about any pedigree I had. And, and I can't tell you, James, how many times when I get into doing RWA, the people sitting in the room are expecting learning speak. They're expecting the whole thing and we don't go anywhere near there for days because until we understand the business and the performance and the gaps and the mistakes and the KPIs, I can't begin to put pen to paper to design anything. And, I, and I've had a lot of people in the room going, what, what are we doing? I've sat in here with you before and we fill a whiteboard with, with what's important stuff. And, and we're, not, we're not even, it's like, because, because we are wrong. <laughs> that, that, that probably wasn't, that really wasn't where we, I'll take the bullet. That really wasn't where we should have started. And that's on me. But let's host a different conversation. And what I love about it is I've had more business folks after, Chris, your question earlier, come up and say, look, I see you differently than I've ever seen you before. And, and, I, and, I, and I, am, I feel more bought into this process and, and valued and, and, and the, the, the deliverable we're going to come up with is really what I want from you than I've ever, ever felt before. Right. That, but but to, to, to Brent's point, you know, you got to get in the deep end, friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we're, 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 I mean, when I get off this call, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to a design session, you know? And so we got it. We got to eventually, we got to get there somehow. Mm -hmm. We do have to get there and I hope everybody gets there. And I did notice a, a, a nice short little list of folks that are hearing about this for the first time. So Bob, thank you so Brilliant. much for hanging out and enlightening everyone. Of course. My, mm. my pleasure, and I hope I wasn't rambling too much or overwhelmed, but um, you guys know where I live. Reach out. I put some information. <laughs> I'll put it again in there, and, and uh, love to continue the dialogue. Thanks, you guys, so much for hosting. And, yeah, and, and Bob, do, do take a second and drop your uh, contact info in, etc. Folks, what we get to do here at Instructional Designers and Offices, drinking coffee, hashtag idiotic, is brought to you, of course, um, by Domino Learning Systems. And a lot of the things that we can do and help your team do at, uh, with our Domino One solution tie in beautifully with five moments of need, making sure that people have information in the flow of work, um, getting out of the mold of simply making courses that are going to be locked in the LMS and one and done. So I threw a link in there. Check us out there. Happy to talk also, to join our LinkedIn group. Join our LinkedIn group too. Brent got that there. Bob, that's so much there.